Since its introduction, the Green New Deal has divided some Democratic lawmakers. CBSN political contributor Molly Hooper spoke with a Democratic lawmaker who is a key figure in moving energy bills through the House. But Congressman Bobby Rush says that he's confused about the proposal. I don't know what it is. If you ask me, and if you ask for it, and then 34 other members of Congress, they could not tell you specifically what it is. You know, if you ask me to describe the Green New Deal, I say, well, it's a concept that is uh, taking the uh, Roosevelt New Deal and add some green to it. But can I really specifically? No, I can't. Okay. It's just a, it's a media creation like big foot. Like Bigfoot, Molly Hooper is in Washington. So, you know, the Green New Deal has been called, you know, maybe a starting point for a conversation or perhaps a, a, mm -hmm. a declaration of intention, if you will. Um, yep. But certainly it seems like a lot of Democratic lawmakers are a little confused about what the point was. If there's going to be an energy bill passed or any kind of sort of reform, mm -hmm. don't the Democrats have to be on the same page? They do need to be on the same page, and if they actually want it to be implemented in law, they need Republican support. And when I was talking to Bobby Ross yesterday, um, it, it was interesting because I asked him, well, does does the, the existence of this so-called Green New Deal, you know, this, this divisive, um, you know, intra-party divisive policy, if you will, does that hamper the ability for Democrats to work with Republicans and, and move forward energy legislation? He said, he said, um, not really, because really what it's all about is um, we're looking at an economy right now where green collar jobs, so to speak, um, are, it, it's a bull market for these green collar jobs. And so Bobby Rush is actually moving legislation, it looks like next week through his committee, it's called the Blue Collar to Green Collar Jobs Act, um, that would essentially, it's a workforce development bill that would provide training and really add dollars to that training for individuals who want to go into that market, especially, um, you know, out of work coal miners, people who used to work in the steel industry um, and spend money in urban areas for minorities, because these are jobs that you don't necessarily need higher education, a college education to take. You just need to know, um, you know, the technicality of it and have access to that education. Well, that's really, that's interesting. Speaking of that committee, uh, the energy yeah. secretary, uh, Rick Perry, appeared before Russia's committee yesterday. What was the focus of that session? Well, I got to tell you something. <laughs> Now, listen, I've covered Capitol Hill a long time, and it, it was interesting because Rick Perry, uh, energy secretary, as you said, shows up, and normally most cabinet secretaries give a five-minute opening statement. But Rick Perry did something a little unusual. He tossed to a promotional video. Um, of all the of all of the you know advancements that are happening in the energy department, this sort of glossy futuristic promo video with with a nuclear reactor in one shot and, a, and a, an American flag unfurling in Rick Perry's face, and pretty much the lawmakers, you could see him looking around on the dais, going, "What is going on?" <laughs> and I mean, that's what, it. Kind of caught people off guard. They were sort of like, "What is this?" And uh, Rush called it all sizzle but no steak, and and. And essentially, it's it, what makes it difficult sometimes for members on Capitol Hill when they're talking to these cabinet secretaries is the budgets don't necessarily echo um, what the cabinet secre secretaries want to do. And and Rick Perry was it was talking about a lot of expensive and expansive, um, you know, research and development areas that aren't included necessarily in the Trump budget that was sent to Capitol Hill. And so really, what lawmakers want to get to the bottom of is okay, what do you think um, we are going to work out in a deal by the end of this year? Because clearly the Trump budget's dead on arrival, and we're going to have to negotiate something. And so Rick Perry seemed open to that. But I got to tell you, that video, man. I mean, it was, it, it was like it was like a title sequence, you know, in a movie. It was just, you know, shot after shot. Very, very interesting. I wonder how much that cost. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Was that included <laughs> in the budget? And also, <laughs> did the same people who uh, made the video for Donald Trump's initial summit with North Korea produce that uh, little number as well? Maybe well, they've... actually, I was I was wondering the same thing, and yeah. I thought of all things, I thought, you know, who would really love this? Donald Trump, the <laughs> right. president.
You would get a kick out of this one. Of course. So we've been talking a bit about, you know, divisions within the uh, Democratic Party, but the Republicans mm -hmm. are really sort of wrestling with some divisions uh, recently, especially since the Senate Intelligence uh, Committee Chairman Richard Burr issued a subpoena to Donald mm -hmm. Trump Jr. He's been taking a lot of criticism from fellow Republicans yep. because of that. What does this tell you about the state of the Republican Party? Well, I, I, it, it's, it's about the state of the Republican Party, but almost more so about the understanding of what the Intelligence Committee is looking into. Their investigation into Russia collusion has to do with counterintelligence and the ability of our lecture, electoral system to be um, to be, uh, you know, invaded, so to speak, by Russia. And so they're trying to get to the bottom of the, the intelligence aspect. They aren't looking into obstruction of justice. They aren't, nothing really that the, the Mueller report was dealing with in terms of, you know, all of the, the, the judiciary issues. I mean, this is really about how can we improve our intelligence system so that this doesn't happen in the future. And from what I understand, Richard Burr spoke to his colleagues at a closed door lunch yesterday and said trust me on this one we've been working with the we've been working with Donald Trump Jr um, he hasn't been he, he hasn't been as cooperative but we need to sort of sort some things out from his previous testimony I don't know if, if Burr went that far but from what I understand that's essentially what's going to happen if Donald Trump Jr shows up and I just want to sort of uh, point something out, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Burr's not running again, right? No, he's not running again. Yeah, no. so uh, perhaps another example of a Republican who's willing to be o openly critical because, hey, his job's actually not on the line. Well, and the other interesting aspect of this is it was really sparked, the news of this was sparked by Mitch McConnell going on the Senate floor and saying, you know, this, this whole thing is over. You know, these mm -hmm. investigations are over. Because this subpoena was actually issued last week. And we didn't know about it, right? So, so that once Mitch McConnell went out there, then word trickled out, well, it's not really over because there's a subpoena for Donald Trump Jr., which was kind of interesting in a, of itself. You know, it's like Republicans, if you are asking about the state of the Republican Party, maybe the intra party dialogue <laughs> needs to be a little bit more clear. Yeah. Um, that, that may have tripped him up a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Molly, thank you so much. Thank you.